Hey everyone, it's been a while. Thank you so much for your patience. I hope you enjoy this little adventure that we're going on. Uh, I did something similar before where we had a mountain bike video. Mountain biking is one of my passions. It's the one thing that I've been able to keep doing over the years that, well, it, you know, if I put it with the right diet, I actually stay in shape. So right now I'm back on the trend of getting back into shape, but whatever, right? You have ups, you have downs. It's the mean that matters most of the time. Now nah, it's probably not true. Anywho, aiming up when you can does matter. And that's what I'm trying to do. Now, interesting little factoid, and this is partly why this is an MS episode and not just a standalone mountain bike video. I got a vaccine today. Now, the details of my comfortability with it and the situation in which I got put in, we're not going to get into any of that other stuff. All you need to know is vaccine, one shot wonder uh, from JJ, and yeah, my favorite mountain biking trail. A few hours after actually getting that prick, I wanted to share this with you and let you see firsthand. Uh, this is more long form than I usually do on these types of things, and that's because I wanted you to see just how much exertion I'm putting out. I want you to see just how much I didn't hold back at my favorite trail today. And yeah, I paid for it in certain ways, so it's worth the watch. Anyway, oh, also, if you're a mountain biking nerd like me, you will get some top tips on certain elements of mountain biking, tire pressures. Uh, we talk a little bit about gearing a very little bit and there's probably some other things. Oh yeah, body position and turns and dealing with leaves and you know, keeping your eyes up for your environment. So I hope you enjoy. If you're a mountain biker, thank you for watching this. And I also hope you get to enjoy one of our local trails here in Kernersville, North Carolina. It's still my home trail and I love it to pieces. Here we go. Last time we were racing the sunlight, the sunset rather. This time we are racing the rain. For those of you that are curious, I am way out of shape. And today I am on Kernersville Mountain Bike Park riding a specialized camber 2016 model i believe full suspension there we go and i'm at one of my favorite trails now out of shape slower than i used to be and today I actually got a vaccine. Oh, I figure we'll put this to the test here. For those of you that don't know, I also have MS and I get regular infusions every six months or so as it suppresses my immune system. I've been curious to see how this was gonna go. People talked about pain, stiffness in the uh, injection site. I mean, that's normal stuff. I opted for the Johnson & Johnson one time, one shot, one kill, as I called it. 
Not that it'll kill me, but if it does, that would be strangely poetic. We are testing out also a recently purchased, used GoPro Hero 7. We're trying a new frame rate. See what you guys think of that. <sighs> Trying not to burn myself out too. Should probably dial it back a notch. Oh, big thanks to Carrie Garrett for the sweet deal on the GoPro. Oop, too slow over that. <sighs> yep, this is about where I feel the burn typically <sighs> when I push too hard at the beginning. <sighs> Not sure what the condition of the bridge is right now, so we'll leave that alone. Up, oh, feel some drizzles. This trail does not drain hardly at all. So after today, depending on how the rainfall goes, it may be down for a couple of days at least. Not feeling the vaccine. This is just me out of shape so far. Of course, everybody says it's the second day that wallops you, Chase. Okay, so we'll see what that looks like. Uh, day one, J and J, one shot, one kill, doing good. And for those that don't know. Before you start writing in and saying, oh my goodness, he's associating the J&J &J vaccine with killing people. No, it's a, it's just an old military phrase. <sighs> Almost to probably the first third, I would say. Taking this in low gear, so 
for those that are familiar with this trail that are watching, no, we haven't switched to slow-mo slow with a uh, voiceover. We are just going stupid slow. Now this guy, the caterpillar, is a little damaged right now, so we're gonna leave him alone too. switchbacks and we'll be up to level grade for a bit I think we're gonna go for the berms this time hopefully no bypasses of course that's gonna depend on how I feel after I get there and what the weather conditions like so far, trail condition, not slippery. With the humidity up, I'd say it would be considered tacky and not even quite that. Of course, when you're on leaves, you wanna stay upright and square to avoid losing grip best as possible when in a turn and heading leaves be sure you crank the bars over but stay square over the tires to keep your weight over the contact patch of the tires if you don't know what the contact patch is that would be the actual piece of the rubber that is contacting the trail now a contact patch, this contact part makes, makes sense, right? Well, now you're looking at the total surface area of your tire that is contacting the trail. Uh, the lower the air pressure, the bigger the contact patch to an extent. So watch your air pressures and make sure try, you try to be consistent with your pressures. So if you're gonna make a change to air pressures based on an experience, you wanna know that it's a reliable experience. Not just something that was a fluke, right? Because what if it was just extra slippery that day that you thought it was your tire pressure? That's not gonna work. Next time you go out, you're going to have so much rolling resistance because of how big a contact patch you have you're going to feel exhausted when you shouldn't it'll be like riding with the parking brake on in your car just you don't want to overdo it now i'm running tubeless as well so if you're going low pressure i wanted to make mention if you're using an inner tube type of tire and you're trying to run lower pressure to get more grip in the turns especially in the damp or the leaves make sure you don't go too low because you go over a route like this guy and you run the risk of what they call a snake bite or a pinch flat where your inner tube gets pinched between your tire and your wheel or rim. Oh, hang on. And it usually happens on both sides of the tire or the inner tube rather. So you end up with actually two holes in your inner tube right next to each other. It kind of looks like, you know, a vampire bite or a snake bite. I would imagine a vampire would be a lot bigger, but you never know. There can be tiny vampires, right? Here we go. Little slick through there. You can tell it got it gets direct rain from an open canopy above the trail. That's something to look out for too. When you're riding 
in a situation like this where you're unsure of the terrain. Looking down and ahead is very important, but one of the other things you should do is look up. See where you can see the, the sun clearly. And if you see that coming up ahead, then you know that spot would have gotten direct rain. No protection from a canopy above it, no leaves to catch it. So it's going to be, in all likelihood, more slick. Now the nice thing is, the opposite is true after a rain and your indirect sunlight. Because the soil is getting direct sunlight, it's going to dry out faster. So you gotta be careful on those spots when you're riding because you might get used to the amount of tackiness on the trail and then hit a patch of dry dust in a well-lit spot that wipes you out in a turn. So looking up, just about as important as looking down, which you probably shouldn't do right now. Whee! Ooh, sidewall scrape on that route. I hit that totally wrong. That one, that one. Here we go, here's some roots. Whee! Oop, feeling it a little bit. Again, just fatigue, nothing scary. Yeah, we're about two miles into this 3.4 mile trail. 3.4, 3.6, 3.2, somewhere in there. It gets kind of hard to read because this trail's really tight in some places and overlaps itself. Uh, not directly, but on GPS, the, it just gets so close to itself, the trail does, that it tends to confuse something like Strava or GPS. Whew. You know, funny thing is, I'm realizing now, I think I forgot to turn on my Strava. Now I'm gonna have no idea what my time today is. And I was kind of hoping to get a rough idea of where I'm at fitness-wise. So I'm gonna have to use the overall video length, which is, that's cool, because I was, ooh, don't do that. That's a bad way to go that way on that part. I was planning to use, you know, the stop button now and again to save some battery life and SD card room. But instead, we're going to get a full record. I think the rain may have passed us by. I haven't heard anything that I would consider direct cloud fall. So that's. It's all right, we got that going for us, which is nice. Feeling a little bit in my toes. May have gotten my laces a little too tight for this ride. Uh, for those curious, I am on flats today. Again, 2016 Specialized Camber. I've had this bike for a while. Full suspension, dropper post, which I haven't used so far. Whoop. Oh yeah, that's a cobweb. Uh, I've got some pretty aggressive tires on here that are a little heavy. Honestly, they make it feel like this bike did when it had inner tubes. So it's not a huge difference, but it does keep the center of gravity low, which is nice. And then also a big thing is the strength of the sidewall uh, is going to be really helpful at trails like Uari in Sparta, North Carolina, 
which is uh, great, but also very tough trail. Switchbacks. Oh man, the berms. They'll make you pay. Hey, there's the first one. That's the warm up. Oh. All right, let's try not to wear ourselves out on the way down. That's what happens when you go too slow, folks. <sighs> what is it? One of the top female mountain bikers in the world said. <sighs> going, f when asked about going fast down a trail, she said something along, along the lines of, going fast is easy. It's when you're going slow that you make mistakes. This couldn't be truer of mountain biking than my humble opinion there's a tree contact just because I was out of breath and going way too slow I'm gonna dodge Randy's rocks there oh, man. all right so in good ways in no five or five no J and J complaints right now Got my own fitness complaints right now, but that's whatever. All right, I speed up. Oh, that one always gets me. Puts this burn in my quads that just hurts for the next little while. Whew. All right, take a breather here. All right, back in the tall chain ring. If you missed it, I dropped down to the low chain ring for berms and for powering out. Now that kind of cost me because I didn't have enough speed for the roots at the top of that crest. The old loop exit. my center of gravity towards the back my heels down a bit in case I need to slam on brakes watching the terrain looking ahead more as I speed up the faster you go the further ahead you want to know all right I think we can get into the little chain ring again so we're gonna need it for berms too oh, here we go He's got three hooks, as I recall. Slip on the pedals a bit. That's not a technical problem. That's a foot problem and being tired problem. But we made it. Now we're going to exit out of here, go through a creek, theoretically, and then it's the long climb up to the parking lot. As you can probably tell, I'm gonna take a break, probably after the creek. That's for safety purposes. Just because I'm 
fatiguing pretty quick. Not, again, not uncommon for me. So far, I've been feeling a little flush before I even started riding. I'm feeling a little lightheaded before I started riding. I've got no real effects to speak of. Here we go. Still pedaling. Still have a gear or two as well. So I'm gonna use one of them right now. There we go. There we go. That was a sketchy part, man. I feel like I still take the dumbest line across it. But it seems to work for me, so. I dare not venture really any other lines. <sighs> yeah, definitely feeling the burn. <sighs> Granny gear. Not the best idea here, but I just didn't have have it in me do it the right way it's gonna cost me on the next climb I'm gonna dial it back keep my cadence up a bit speed and gear slow let myself catch my breath Just enough speed. Get up that. And this. There we go. Oh. Yeah, toes are definitely tingling due to my laces being a touch too tight. Maybe my pedal placement not the greatest. Could lock out my suspension to save some pedal efficiency too. Uh, I'm not doing that though. Here we go. <clears throat> All right, one more to go. The leg burn. There's that burn I was talking about that I feel for a while. Way down low in the quads, right at the knee. Trying to save it up because we got one more big dig to flat out. And well, how about that? We are up, coming up to the flat. On our way out. Oh. 
There we go. There's the truck. Look at that, baby. Yeah. Oh. A little bit tired. Gotta say, a little bit tired. Well, thanks everyone. I don't know if it's because I had you guys watching or if it's because I'm getting in better shape than I thought I was, but we made it all the way around with no, no intended, no intentional dismounts. How about that? Thank you all. It's great to see you again. Peace out.